So now it's time to apply what we've already learned. We're going to practice doing an ANOVA by hand. Now to simplify this, I'm going to give you some of the more difficult parts, particularly the sum of squares. But what I want you to do is practice on putting those numbers into the summary table for an F test and being able to put these data together in APA style. So here is the analysis that we are going to conduct for our one-way ANOVA. Following a series of complaints about wicked witches, the Wizard of Oz conducts a study to determine if certain regions of Oz have more problems with wicked witches than other regions. He randomly surveys five munchkins from each of four regions and records the total number of complaints that he receives about wicked witchiness from each region. Is there a difference in witch wickedness between regions? We are going to find out. So in this table, I have each of the four regions, north, south, east, and west, and the number of complaints registered from each of those regions. Already we can see that it seems like the complaints are fewer in the north and south than they are in the east and the west. Hopefully you're familiar enough with the Wizard of Oz that this does not come as a surprise to you. But even if it did, we could still look at those means. We see the means for uh, regions in the north and the south are 1 and 1.4. In the east and the west, the means are 3.6, 4.2. So what do we have going on here? Let's do an ANOVA to find out. We need to remember that our N, our total sample size, is 20. And our K is 4. We have four regions. And let's calculate our ANOVA. We're going to use the same five steps for hypothesis testing that we've been using in every other example. Starting with number one, select the appropriate statistic. So what kind of test can we use to compare the means of four independent groups? The answer is the one-way ANOVA. Let's then start with our null and our alternative hypotheses. The null hypothesis always begins as h sub 0. What would you write for the rest of that null hypothesis? mu1 equals mu2 equals mu3 equals mu4. We're just going to assume no differences among any of the regions. Our alternative hypothesis would therefore be mu1 does not equal mu2, does not equal mu3, does not equal mu4. So what we are saying is that there are differences between all of the regions. We're not using planned contrasts here. We're just using the simplest way of writing the null and the alternative hypotheses. What would be our level of significance? Well, first of all, we need to remember what kind of test are we running. We're going to call this a one-tailed test because the F distribution only goes in one direction. But really, we're running more like a two-tailed test because we're saying all the means will be equal. So at this point, the one-tail, two-tail kind of starts to break down. In either case, there's only one F value, one F critical value that we can find. And it's always going to be positive. So one-tail, two-tail, it really starts to become immaterial at this point. But the alpha level is still going to be 0 0.05. And our degrees of freedom... 3 and 16. Now what are those? 3 is degrees of freedom between, 16 degrees of freedom within. Now if you don't understand those, go back to the previous videos and make sure you understand where those two degrees of freedom come from. What we would then do is go to our F table and look up the critical value for 3 and 16 degrees of freedom. That critical value is 3.24. Now we are ready to calculate our statistics using a one-way ANOVA. In this example, I've already given you the sum of squares and put them into an ANOVA summary table. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video, try to fill in the table as best you can, and then let's make sure that you know where all of these numbers come from. All right, welcome back. Let's see if you did this right. The degrees of freedom between, 3. Degrees of freedom within, 16. 
and total degrees of freedom, 19. The sum of squares have already been provided for you. If you really wanted to, you could go back and use that sum of squares formula that I taught you back in the variability chapter. You can find out where these numbers came from. But the mean square between is 37.75 divided by 3, 12.58, and mean square within, 1.20. Divide 12.58 by 1.20, your F value is 10.486. So because our F of 10.48 is larger than our critical value of 3.24, we know that statistically significant differences exist between some of those groups. But we still do not know which region has more witch wickedness than which other region. To determine that, we're going to need a post hoc test.